Hi, when the development of the software project is finished and it is ready to be shipped to the customers, it is very important to make the experience as smooth as possible. The best option would be creation of an installer and the customers will be guided through the wizard interface of installing the component of the software. In this video I will demonstrate how to create a simple installer for Solar's add-in using the Windows Installer XML, also known as Wix Framework. Let's start with downloading the Wix Framework from the website. Go to wixtoolset.org, navigate to Downloads and just select the last stable release. Once downloaded, run and install framework to your machine. It is possible to compile the installer directly from the command line, but it is recommended to use Visual Studio extension, which can be downloaded from Microsoft Marketplace. Select the version of extension which matches your Visual Studio version and install it. Now let's create an install for Solar's add-in. I already have a developed project here, so I'm just going to open the solution and add a new setup project uh, directly to that solution. When we install the extension, a new templates have been added. So now under Wix toolset, you can find the setup project for Wix. You can just specify the name and the location where this project should be created. The default setup project is created, so now let's just customize it to fit our needs. As a first step, I want to add few extra references from my Wix installation folder. So I'm going to use it to create my default uh, installation dialogs. I need to add Wix UI extension and Wix Utils extension. Uh, by default, the created project will only compile 32-bit uh, installer. So if I go to build, I can only see uh, x86 architecture in here, while uh, usually my SolidWorks uh, is 64-bit. It is required to alter setup project to allow 64-bit environment. I will need to modify the code of my project file. I can just unload and edit it directly in Visual Studio or I can use uh, any text editor like Notepad. I simply need to change my property group configuration to explicitly tell that I'm going to compile to 64-bit installer. And as you can see, 64-bit platform is now supported. To simplify the process of including the DLLs into my installer project, I would like to change my output path for uh, my add-in to be a build folder. The add-in now has been compiled into the build folder. And let's browse to that one. So here's my uh, DLLs and here's my setup project. Now I want to define the preprocessors variable which is going to reference my uh, build uh, location. So it is uh, one level up relative to my setup project and in the build folder. This will allow me to move a solution into the different folder, but the setup project will still refer the correct outputs. Now let's define the look and feel of uh, my installer. At first, I want to add few references to my UI components to define the standard pages on my installer. These lines will add a few standard pages to my installer, such as welcome page, browse for install directory page, progress page, and also the exit page. Please refer the Wix page for more information about customizing those pages. Now I want to add some attribution to my installer, such as background image, uh, banner image, and icon. So I'm just going to add a resources folder and just copy a few uh, images from here and just uh, browse them into my solution so they get compiled together with an uh, add-in and setup project. In order to reference those data in my uh, installer, I need to add few uh, XML nodes here and few variables. So for example, icon node would allow me to reference my icon and Wix variable called Wix UI banner BMP will allow to add me a banner to my installer and so on. Please refer the article in the description of this video for more information about the sizes and the format of the banner and background images. I can also add the step for my user to accept the end user license agreement. So this is just another variable I need to add into my product WXS. Now we need to add components into our installer. In Wix components represent files, registry entries, com registrations, etc. In order to correctly deploy Solar's add-in, we need to add three types of components. First one is a set of registry values which we need to 
add in order to solve or to recognize our adding. So you need to specify the grid for the component itself. So it could be any uh, random grid. And we can specify the values for title and description of our add-in and the actual grid of our add-in, which we need to paste here. Second component we need to add is to link all of the files generated into the build folder. So in this case, I want to split it into the two components, one which will represent uh, solver's interrupts and another one which will represent all of the data files except of the actual add-in file because I'm going to add it with another component later. I will specify a new grid for my component and going to add my DLL config, type library and also my third-party libraries. I just need to move those components under the component group node. Now I need to add last component to my installer and this one is going to register my add-in as a com object. There are several ways of doing that but the most recommended one is to use the harvest tool from Vix. This tool will generate all required information about your com object and allows to add this as a component into your component group. I can call this tool from within the post build event of my add-in. So whenever this DLL is built, the harvest tool will create the corresponding component. In this example, it's going to create a component called addin comp rec and it's going to be placed in my output directory. Let me browse to my output directory and find this component. So here it is. Uh, I just want to add it into my installer project. So it's going to be compiled together with installer and I can also link it in my component group. Let's inspect this file. So as you can see, it has added a bunch of registry entries, the link to a file and some extra com component registration information. Now I simply need to add this component group into my feature. That's it. And that's all we need to do. We can modify a couple of options such as include the cap file directly into the installer. So we have just one uh, file when it is compiled. I want to also modify my default installation folder to be 64-bit program files. And I also want to change the name of the product and want to include one extra folder which is going to be the author name. I may modify the default output name of my installer. Usually this equals to a product name. I will compile my project and I will be able to find the MSI directly into the list folder of my setup project. Now let's install this project via generated MSI file. So here you can see the welcome page. On the next page you can see the EULA. I, when I click accept, uh, next button is enabled. Here we can specify the default installation folder. Click install to complete the installation of the add-in. We can now start solders to make sure that add-in is successfully installed into the machine. So when I load solders, you can see that my add-in is currently loading and I can see the toolbar of that add-in added to the solders toolbar. Now when you update your add-in and new version to be released, you simply need to change the version in the installer and just compile new MSI package to be delivered to your users. So this video demonstrated the basic functionality of Wix installer. However, it is highly flexible framework, so you can customize your installer as much as you want. Please follow the link in the description of this video for source code and examples of using Wix for deploying solar's add-ins. Thank you for your time.